Hi, I'm Dr. Heidi Coltfarber, and thank you so much for joining me today for another Interpreting CBCT's uh, series. And today we're going to be talking about malignant lesions. So what happens when you find a malignant looking entity on your CBCT? We'll talk about how we can go through that. Uh, just a few disclosures. I'm the owner and managing oral maxillofacial radiologist for dental radiology diagnostics and a 3D trainer and key opinion leader for multiple of the imaging companies. I'm also adjunct professor in diagnostic sciences at UNC Chapel Hill School of Dentistry and assistant professor for general diagnostic radiology at Loma Linda University School of Medicine. So let's jump right in this. So this was the case history that was sent to us when the CBCT was sent to us. And this particular case is a 65-year-old male with a history of kidney issues and a 40-year history of smoking. His chief complaint is he recently had teeth extracted and he needs to be evaluated. Now, with any of our CBCTs, when we find a lesion, we're going to go through our radiographic signs. And again, those are radiographic density, margin characteristics, shape, location and distribution, size, internal architecture, and the effects on the surrounding tissues. Now, the two that are underlined are the most important because they let us know how aggressive a particular entity is. So really going to pay attention to our marginal characteristics and the effects on the surrounding tissues. All right, let's go to our volume and take a look. So this is our patient case. Now, I do want to let you know that when we're reviewing a CBCT, we do review the entire CBCT to rule out lesions in other areas. Uh, but for brevity in this particular case, we're going to go directly to the region of interest. So he's had some anterior maxillary teeth taken out. And we can see that we don't have a lot of bone left. Do we? And we're reviewing it in our axial sections. The fact is we're coming down through our axial sections. You might notice that we have erosion of cortical borders. We're just losing those cortical borders. We have internal architecture is hypodense or radiolucent to the surrounding trabecular bone. We're talking about it with the CBCT. We're going to call it hypodense. And it's really more isodense to the soft tissues, which is meaning it's the same density as those soft tissues. So it looks like we have a large soft tissue lesion um, in the left anterior maxilla, but also the hard palate. And a key feature of this lesion is that it's crossing the midline. So that's not a great thing. We have a couple of benign entities that will cross that midline, but on the average, when we're seeing something that's crossing the midline, that should already be a red flag for us that we could have something more serious going on. So definitely this is crossing the midline. Um, we're losing cortical borders. In fact, if I want to find my incisive canal, really can't find the incisive canal at all. In fact, when you're looking at the hard palate, much of the hard palate is gone. Uh, we really don't see a lot going on. Now, if we're looking carefully internally, let's make it a little bit higher contrast, we do have what looks like some little hyperdensities within this particular lesion. And that's most likely to be remnant bone. So this has largely destroyed the cortical borders and we have some remnant bone. So at this point, let's go ahead and talk about where we're at. So we have erosion of the cortical borders in the palate, in the inferior aspect of the nasal fossa. So we really don't see those cortical borders. And actually it's extending into the anteroinferior aspect of the maxillary sinuses bilaterally. So actually this is quite large. It's a very, very large lesion that we have going on here. And of course, remember we do have a history of smoking with this patient. So 
that's going to help us a little bit when we're um, talking about our differentials and what they're going to be. So this is actually a fairly large lesion there. Let's go ahead and do a custom section and see if we see any more detail. Really just looks like we're missing all of our anatomy, doesn't it? Okay, and there's our tooth number eight. Delete that. Let's go ahead and look at tooth number eight. And let's see if this is doing anything to tooth number eight. I'm going to lower my density just a little bit so we can see what's going on with this particular tooth. Um, I don't see any root resorption with tooth number eight. There's the other teeth were extracted in this. This kind of make you wonder if somebody extracted these teeth. I wonder what they saw at that time. Um, kind of an interesting finding. This is a very large lesion. And we don't know how long it's been there. The patient's probably not aware of it themselves. But definitely we are missing our cortical borders. So very concerning for us. Let's go ahead and make a panoramic reconstruction as well. That might help us just a little bit. And then I do have some selected images in the um, PowerPoint discussion as well. So that can help us a little bit to better define what we're looking at. Because I would say on the whole, this is ill-defined. So when we are looking in our panoramic reconstruction, we just see that we have lost cortical borders. We've lost the alveolar bone. We really don't have a lot of definition with this. Now, one other thing I am going to point out really quickly, that as we're going through our axial section, we do have some asymmetry within the airway space as well. The patient could be in the process of swallowing, or this actually could be part of that larger lesion. Um, that we're seeing within the palate as well. Could be something that has maybe um, metastasized from somewhere else. So those are all things that we would think about as we're going through the volume. Um, lesser importance, but also still a good thing to point out is we do have bilateral calcified carotid atheromas. So we can see that bilaterally. It's their posterior and lateral to the airway space. And we can see it's fairly extensive, actually. So he's got he's got some things going on. And kind of when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking about maybe a little bit of a, a pattern of neglect. I know it said that he had some kidney disease. So he's he's probably had a, um, a rough go of things. So that's kind of my thought process when I'm looking at this. All right. Let's go back to our um, lecture. And let's look at some individual selected slices. We did do the panoramic reconstruction, which we already talked about. And let's look at some coronal sections as well. As we go through, again, we're missing the inferior cortical border of the nasal fossa. Uh, we noticed that we were missing the uh, buccal and lingual uh, cortical borders of the alveolar bone, the palatal bone. Um, it was starting to get into the sinuses as well. And we do have a little bit of internal content within this particular entity that's most likely just remnant bone. There are axial sections. As you go through them, we can see a little bit of that remnant bone within it. But largely erosion, um, loss of cortical borders, loss of that definition that we would typically see with our anatomy. And it does cross the midline, which is never a good sign. All right, so what are our radiographic signs, our features. Well, this is hypodense to surrounding bone. It's really more of a soft tissue density entity. The marginal characteristics are largely ill-defined. We can't tell exactly where it is located. Um, very regular shape. I can see it's located along the anterior and posterior aspect of the hard palate, floor of the nasal fossa, and the inframedial aspect of the maxillary sinus is bilaterally. It does cross the midline and extends along the palatal aspect of tooth number eight. But we didn't really have any root resorption with that tooth. The approximate size that we can see in our scans 
was about 49 millimeters by 30 and a half millimeters in axial sections. But we know that there's going to be a large soft tissue component to this that we can't see with our scans. The internal architecture, again, we said hypodense to surrounding bone, but isodense to soft tissue. And those internal little bony spicules are most likely consistent with remnant bone. We do have erosion loss of cortical borders, which we did discuss. So we're coming up with a differential for this. Um, obviously, we're thinking a category of malignancy. And the things that would be on our differential, of course, with the, the history of the patient, the age of the patient, um, 40 years smoking, we're going to think about a squamous cell carcinoma. That's probably going to be our number one. A cynic cell carcinoma or adenoid cystic carcinoma are going to be two and three. These are uh, carcinomas that tend to show up in this particular entity or this particular region is what I should say. Um, so we'll see those in the hard palate. So if you have a hard palate lesion, these are the three things I would think about and how are we managing it? Prompt referral to oral surgery for additional evaluation and biopsy. We do need soft tissue imaging. We need MRI imaging to know where the actual margins are and rule out something that um, may be going on within that airway space as well. And that will help to uh, put together the treatment plan for this patient. So they have a long road. So looking at our malignant lesions, what do we think of? Well, these tend to be ill-defined. Um, they tend to have maybe um, moth-eaten borders to them. No defined shape. So we've just lost cortical borders. Uh, you know, our internal architecture is mainly going to be hypodense or radiolucent, except for in a few cases. We can see some opacities with our osteosarcomas. Rarely breast cancer and prostate cancer can be radiopaque or have some opacities to them. Effects on the surrounding tissues, we can see teeth floating in air. Um, why do we see this? Well, these particular lesions are traveling so quickly that they essentially um, just erode through all of the bone support around the teeth. But occasionally, we can also see a spiked root appearance. So you can get a root resorption, but it's a vertical root resorption. Um, but again, sometimes it doesn't bother to do anything because it's just traveling so quickly and the teeth look like they're floating in air. Now, could this be confused with periodontal disease? Of course it could. Uh, periodontal disease is going to be more common than a malignancy. But we need to look at the whole patient case to try to figure out what's going on. If the patient has otherwise pristine bone levels, then we're going to say, this is atypical. It's a red flag. We should probably go ahead and biopsy that. If, however, the patient has rampant periodontal disease, then this is most likely to be rampant periodontal disease. So we really need to look at that whole patient case. Um, we can see asymmetric widening of the periodontal ligament spaces. It destroys cortical borders um, like maxillary sinuses, mandibular canal, and that sort of thing. So when we do see soft tissue lesions or malignancies within our uh, CBCTs, Largely what we'll see is loss of anatomy, loss of cortical borders. So for instance, this particular lesion was brought into us at one of our 3D trainings. And the comment was, I just don't see any anatomy on the left side. And that's a very bad sign because it means that that anatomy has been destroyed. There's a loss of that anatomy. There is some sort of mass that is in that particular area. So this ended up being a pleomorphic sarcoma, and it went all the way through into brain. So very sad case with that. Uh, here's another one. This is our osteosarcoma. We can see that it is producing a nice little sun ray spicule, and that tends to be a feature of osteosarcoma. But just know the majority of osteosarcomas actually don't show this beautiful appearance. Um, we really see it in less than half of them. But there's a large soft tissue component to that, and we've just lost those cortical borders, we've lost the anatomy. We really can't see the alveolar bone, can't see the maxillary sinuses, lateral aspect of that nasal fossa. 
And of course, we have malignancies in the mandible. And again, these can oftentimes be confused for periodontal bone loss. And so they can be fairly advanced by the time they actually have a biopsy. So just something to think about if it looks like a slightly atypical periodontal bone loss or atypical hypodensity. Uh, this ended up, uh, this particular case, we could see a moth-eaten appearance within the mandible. So it definitely lets us know we have a malignancy. And this was a central squamous cell carcinoma, a very unusual case. This is a very interesting case. We'll have to go through this sometime together. Metastatic breast cancer. Again, one of the reasons we look at cortical borders as we're going through our CBCTs, here we have a loss of the cortical borders, a moth-eaten appearance. We can see just a moth-eaten hypodensity with that. And we can see systemic malignancies as well. So this is a malignant melanoma. And if you look carefully, you see multiple of these little punched out lesions all throughout the mandible. And actually, it was um, we could see it within the um, temporomandibular joints within those condylar heads as well. And sometimes we can get a singular lesion uh, with a history of multiple myeloma. This is a plasma cytoma. This particular case, the patient came in with a history of numbness. And so we're already looking on a particular side. We have a, a red flag that there's numbness. And you can just see thinning and loss of cortical borders. And that's your red flag that you do have something going on. Our custom sections did show that we have something that is extending through the mandibular canal. Very ill-defined, very difficult to try to measure where exactly this is. A little bit of a slightly different trabecular pattern, uh, but largely difficult to find. But we can look for it, especially if we know what side to look on. And as far as our CBCTs, we are always looking at our cortical borders. So if you're coming down through your axial sections, you would catch, up, catch the fact that you had minimal cortical bone on this side. You have something going on. You have a patient with numbness and we can clearly see it extending through that mandibular canal. I hope you enjoyed the discussion for today. I know I really did. I really appreciate your time. Um, if you enjoyed this content, um, please go ahead and like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can be notified of future videos. And I look forward to reviewing another case with you in the future. Have a great day. Bye. <music>